when I tried to go to the internet, and I've complained about this before, to find videos or even reviews of old Bridge City tools or even current Bridge City tools, I found almost nothing, which surprised me because you go to YouTube and there's videos on every widget known to man. So I thought I would do, you know, a few really simple videos on some old Bridge City tools just to capture, you know, for posterity or if somebody has an interest in acquiring one, they can see what it's really like more than just a photograph and a marketing blurb. I mean, you can go to the Bridge City website and look up any of their old tools and, and you will see a photo and a, and a paragraph, but that's about it. <clears throat> so I thought I would start with the CT, the earliest CT commemorative tools. The CT1 and the CT2. The history, and John Economaki has written about this, of the CT series is, is pretty simple. The company, at a particular point, there was a U.S. financial crisis. The company was going to go under, and John Economaki sent out a letter to all his database that said, in essence, if you stick with us, we'll make a special tool only available to you, not to the general public. And thus was born the CT-1. Now, Bridge City built its reputation on tri-squares and other layout tools. So how is this any different, and why might you want to acquire one of these if you can find one? Um, the regular tri, this, the, the CT-1 was also called the squevel, and we'll show you that in a second, because it's a square and a bevel. The regular line of tri-squares that Bridge City made, here's one. Um, the handle was wood, generally rosewood, with brass insets and a brass facing on both sides. <clears throat> the CT1 was solid brass with a rosewood inset. <clears throat> Beautiful rosewood, by the way, so I'm sure it's Brazilian. So, one thing is, this is a massively heavy for the size uh, of the tool. <clears throat> this would have been comparable in terms of the length of the blade, I think it's six and a half inches, to the Tri-Square 1.5, not the biggest of the line, the middle of the line. So what, you know, other than being beautiful, it's very heavy, it's a massive thing. Um, you turn the locking nut here, you reveal it's not a sliding bevel, just a bevel. Um, it locks that way. Some people I've read complained that they couldn't get it to lock. Uh, I haven't had any problems with the locking mechanism. Put it back in. Uh, let's see if we can get the uh, Bridge City logo here. On the back it says commemorative tool, CT1, Squevel, terrible name. Uh, and in 1993, there's also the uh, the actual serial number of the thing. This was the 1,000th, no, no, this was one minute. I have to put on my glasses. This was the 2,420th, and it says R, so it was Rosewood. So that's the squabble. Then they came uh, a year later and put out the CT2, and John Economaki in his book says, it, it really feels he got lazy because they did another square. I don't think he got lazy. This square is very different. For one thing, it's a nine inch long blade, so it's a big tri-square. Uh, it's a steel blade, not brass. It's graduated uh, on both sides, different graduations. There's a vertical as well as horizontal. And a couple of differences. First, it's an adjustable tri-square. This was at the beginning of Bridge City's attempts, successful attempts to make adjustable squares. So there's two uh, hex nuts here that you can loosen and adjust the square. I adjusted the square already. When I got it, it was slightly off. It took me three or four minutes to get it perfect, so it's very easy to use. Um, it has 
the bevel like the CT1. This time they put in a sliding bevel. Very nice. They also put in a level. So they actually call this the squevel, <laughs> the squevel level or something crazy like that. I mean, it's a crazy name. But anyway, it does have a very nice level, adjustable uh, finger or thumb indentations very so making it very easy to hold despite it being very big much bigger than the ct1 it doesn't feel any heavier than the ct1 they're they're very similar weights undoubtedly because of the steel square instead of the brass square but it too is a solid piece of brass uh, with wooden inlay and the handle the other feature that is my favorite feature of this particular square is the fact that you put the bevel, the bevel out and the tri-square is a one-handed tri-square. And that's just a very clever idea, a very simple idea, but a very clever one. So, that is the uh, the CT2. The other thing I really love about the CT2, the graduated blade is as easy a blade to read uh, of any um, ruler that I have, or any ruler square, whatever I have. For whatever reason, it's just uh, very easy for my old eyes to read. So I use this a lot, just as a, you know, in marking because of the ease of the uh, the graduations. So that's the CT1 and CT2.